commissioners present? Yes. All right, great. Um, I will now call the Committee on Government Operations to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Each member is acknowledging that they are attending the meeting via Zoom and that they are located in Wayne County, Michigan, unless otherwise stated when I call your name. Commissioner Knizek? Here. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Here. Commissioner Basham? Here. Commissioner Colleen? Here. Chair Dobb? Here. We have a quorum present. Thank you, next item. B, Chairwoman's remarks. I have none. Next item. C, approval of the November 30th, 2021 meeting minutes. Move approval. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion on the meeting minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. <laughs> Excuse me, next item, please. D, unfinished business. There is none listed. Okay, next item. Then one, under new business, communication from Wayne County Treasurer, Eric Sabri, forwarding the report on all measures taken and programs implemented to assure that senior citizens, as well as other county residents, do not lose their homes as a result of delinquent property taxes. Okay, actually, let's take um, items one and two together. Sorry about that. Could you read out oh, no, item number two? Item two, communication from Wayne County Treasurer Eric Savry forwarding the report on legal cases concluded in fiscal year 2020 to 2021. Okay, does anyone have any questions or discussion on these two items? Right. Uh, um, yes, Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner Colleen. Yeah, actually I have a couple of questions. Is Treasurer Sabri with us? Treasurer Sibri is not with you today. This is Chief Deputy Treasurer jean Vier Adams. Oh, uh, uh, good afternoon and thank you for being here. Um, there is a uh, memorandum uh, attached to the first report about uh, legal cases and how they were what happened to them? There was 416 matters concluded. That part of the report. Item two, sir. Uh, a section on there, there were 325 objections to foreclosure claims. What is that? And, and um, it's not clear to me how they were disposed of from this report. Okay. Um, we have with us Blair Daniels from the um, Corporation Council Office. I can try to answer that. But I, I think believe, Blair's... Yeah, that's the second report. I'm sorry. Right. Your okay, first so, report was great. Thank you for running down all of those programs that you're doing. Thank you. Um, as far as the objections to foreclosures, taxpayers are allowed to object to um, foreclosure under the General Property Tax Act. Um, and it's a process where it goes before the Third Circuit Court. Judge Kinney hears the objections every year. Um, we have, since the pandemic, instituted a process where it's, it's actually part of the show cause process. So we, we send out the show cause notices as required by statute. We advise taxpayers of their right to object to foreclosure for any of seven reasons that we list. They then submit their objections to the court and they copy the Office of Corporation <laughs> Counsel objection hearings are held typically in February of each year. And that is where they are, um, I don't wanna say disposed of, but that's where they're handled by the court. So if a uh, taxpayers has a legitimate reason to object to a foreclosure, it's a po there's a possibility that their property may be removed from foreclosure until whatever issue has been raised is resolved. And so these 300 and 25 cases, was anybody successful in their objection to the foreclosure or were foreclosures ordered for all 325? Many people are successful. Um, and for one, one type of objection that we frequently hear is that um, a property owner has been 
assess taxes on a parcel that should have been exempt um, by the local taxing authority. So when they raise that issue um, and we find out that if for instance, a parcel is owned by a religious or an exempt organization that is used for an exempt purpose, then those parcels are removed from foreclosure. So yes, there are some successes or if they raise an issue with notice and we discover that notice has been improperly given, then those parcels can also be removed. Yeah, uh, can you give us a breakdown on those 325 then, how many were successful? Just to have an idea of, you know, I, they, were, they were appealed, how many people kept their properties and weren't foreclosed on? Okay, um, I don't have that information. Blair, I don't know if- Well, I, yeah. you have it somewhere. I didn't expect you to have it today. Right. Uh, so but see, the, the first item on there says lawsuits adjudicated in favor of the Wayne County Treasurer. So in that line, you did report what the outcome was, how many, you know, how many were successful in favor of the treasurer. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm looking for the same kind of thing for this item. How many people were successful in their objections to foreclosure? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, this year was actually um, a unique year because we, so people, they did file objections to foreclosure, but we only foreclosed on unoccupied properties this year. And so because of that, um, there were many people that filed objections before the decision was made not to foreclose on any unoccupied properties. And so the vast majority of cases were properties that were occupied. Um, so many people in the interim, they either got into payment agreements or if it was an occupied property, um, it was automatically removed from foreclosure this year. So the vast majority of those cases um, were properties that were occupied. And there was actually um, one individual that filed, I, I believe it was over a hundred objections. And um, he actually didn't own those properties. He seemed to be interested in owning those properties. I, I don't think he totally understood how the objection process works, but um, he, he seemed to think that in filing objections to foreclosure, he could somehow obtain ownership to these properties. Um, but no. the, the best, yeah. Don't tell so, me, so no, the, nobody would try to game the system. Nobody would do that. <laughs> um, well, and then and, and, and to, to shorten this up a little bit, of those 325, any of those were occupied, they were not foreclosed on. That's correct. So the, that, the vast majority were occupied. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. uh, and how long is that uh, policy going to remain of not foreclosing on occupied homes? So, so the redemption period for all occupied properties was extended to March of 2022. So all properties that were occupied um, as of last year when the foreclosure process was initiated have until um, March of 2022 to get into a payment agreement. And so many individuals have taken advantage of this and, you know, they've gotten into a payment agreement. So that way, you know, they have even more time to pay their taxes. All righty. Uh, thank you very much for your answers. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or discussion on these two items? Would anyone like to move these items to receive and file? Move to receive and file, Madam Chair. Support. One and two. Okay, we have a motion and support. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Next item, please. M3, requesting commission approval of the appointment of Donna Wilson to the position of director of the Department of Personnel slash Human Resources. All right, great. This is uh, good news because we uh, definitely need this at Wayne County. So do we have, um, uh, is anyone from the administration here who wants to introduce Donna Wilson or? Um, yes. Okay, great. Good morning, uh, Commissioner Dobb. This is Janelle Allen, Chief Operating Officer with the County Executive's Office, and it is absolutely my pleasure to introduce 
uh, and recommend Donna Wilson for appointment as our next director of the Personnel Human Resources Department. Um, from her resume, you could tell that she is a highly skilled human resources leader. She has spent her entire career in the human resources field. She has close to 30 years of experience, if not 30 years of experience, all of which has been spent in the public sector with the state of Michigan, with the exception of one year when she worked with the Meritech, where she still was in the human resources field. She started her career at an entry level in labor relations and then ascended throughout her career to supervisory management and then ultimate leadership roles. And she currently serves as the director of the Michigan Gaming Control Board and the state lottery. Uh, she started at the Michigan Department of Transportation and throughout her career there, she's actually gone to different agencies within the state. So she's had exposure to a wide variety of HR matters, including talent recruitment, career development, equal opportunity, labor relations, and even compensation and benefits. Through our process, she's gone through a very rigorous interview process. It started with just an initial phone screen and then the three panel screening. But then she also interviewed with a panel of what we call peers, where the chief deputies of the elected offices were invited to participate and did participate, as well as directors, various directors from across the county on the executive side, all leaders who will be working with the personnel and HR director. She performed admirably during those interviews. She also interviewed with the panel with the county executive's office, as well as had a number of, I'll say, one-on-one -on -one, heart to heart conversations with me directly. I have, we have been very candid with uh, Ms. Wilson about the challenges that she will face walking in the door, challenges that we know have been exacerbated by the pandemic resulting in the great resignation. And uh, she and I had a joke, every conversation we end where I have been very candid, as I said, at times brutally blunt, I always ask, are you still interested? <laughs> and she always assure you every time she said, I am. There was one time before I could actually say, Janelle, I'm still interested, <laughs> uh, as she knows. Uh, with that, then I'd like uh, for her then, to, if she can just share with you about why she is interested, especially as she's already had a phenomenal career. Uh, she does plan on retiring. Uh, and then why would she want to be walking in and filling these shoes at this time? Yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Welcome, back, Donna. Thank you so much. And thank the commission and the executive office and Janelle and everyone who I've interviewed with. This has really been a wonderful experience. Um, when you look at taking a new role, especially in HR, you want to look at the good best practices. And I can tell you that this interview process has been a good best practice. Um, just, you know, really uh, talking and the cross-sectional um, interviews that I've um, had the opportunity to have. So a little bit um, about my background and why the career change. Um, public sector HR had, was a career choice from the beginning when I uh, came out of college. Labor relations was my emphasis. I've spent a career in state government going from various agencies and having exposure. Why Wayne County? Wayne County, it, with my exposure to the various state agencies, very similar to the services offered Wayne, at Wayne County. Very excited. I have a uh, high energy and I still a passion for the field of HR. I continue with certification in HR, um, most recently in diversity, equity, inclusion. So I continue to want to be a student of the business and to use those talents and skills and um, with the county. Wonderful. I'm not sure. Go ahead. Oh, oh did you have anything else? No, um, I'm spotlighted now, so I can't see, see everyone else. Oh, okay. I can only see you. <laughs> well, um, I would like to introduce myself. Um, I see that you live in Canton Township, so um, I'm your commissioner, Melissa Dobb. So I'm um, really excited <laughs> that you're from, from my district. Yeah. And um, I guess my question is um, probably, um, you know, I'm not going to ask you how you're going to solve all of our, our hiring problems, but from you know from working at the state level do you see Wayne County's um hiring and, and talent retention um issues as unique or is this a, a problem that all counties are having and um and the root causes are they the same are they different throughout the state well um I think that it, 
every organization, public, private, is experiencing COVID and no one in this generation has really planned for this level of pandemic. So I would say in certain respects, yes, Wayne County is very similar to um, many other agencies. What may be um, somewhat different is that, you know, Wayne County came out of a structural deficit, you know, spent maybe a small time, you know, saying, okay, where do we go from here? And then the pandemic hit. So um, and that may be somewhat of unique for Wayne County, but I think that all employers including the state, we are looking at the same type of, you know, how do we, you know, hire new employees, how to retain the ones we have, and how our, our work operations going to fit the new normal. Very good. <clears throat> I see Commissioner Clark Coleman, you have a question? Go ahead. Yes, uh, and welcome aboard. Um, Thank you. Um, uh, I'm glad that uh, Janelle gave you lots of chances to turn it down, <laughs> <laughs> but we're glad to have you. So um, I am um, chair of, not this committee, but I'm chair of uh, public safety. And we have mm -hmm. a, a huge problem uh, hiring and uh, maintaining uh, deputies in the mm -hmm. sheriff's department. So um, in addition to that, we've got, people who I think um, ought, they, they ought to have their uh, positions reevaluated mm -hmm. to see if they are being under um, underpaid or uh, underrepresented uh, because mm -hmm. I think that that might be one of the reasons that we're losing personnel is because um, people uh, that we're, we're, we got people in positions that ought to be upgraded. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm hopeful that that will be one of the, one of the items on your agenda is taking a look at these positions to see if they should be upgraded. So we don't keep losing uh, our, mm -hmm. our personnel. Thank you. Yeah, um, looking at job specifications and requirements is something that the HR offices, you know, do traditionally and I have done um, with the agencies that I do support. Okay. Well, that's one of the top items that I see that we've got to get a handle on in Wayne County. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I, I agree with that also. Um, Commissioner Colleen, I just saw that you unmuted. Did you have a question? I would, no, I was going to move approval. Oh, okay. Go <laughs> no, right ahead. <laughs> I move approval of this item. And I support. Item okay. three, yep. Okay, does anyone else have any questions? Okay, hearing none. Um, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Knezik? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Chair Dobb? Yes. Motion passes and um, we will hopefully see you at full board next week if you can make it. And, okay. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Very excited. <laughs> thank you all. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Item four, requesting commission approval of the appointment of Hector Roman to the position of director of the Department of Information Technology. All right, I will um, pass this over to Janelle again. Thank you again. I'll start by saying this is a really good day for Wayne County. It is truly a pleasure now to be able to recommend one of our own to promote from within. As you know, we really do try to do that as well, but oftentimes we just, sometimes we just can't is how we do, we have Donna. But it is just it's a tremendous pleasure now to recommend Hector Roman to serve in the permanent role as a director of information technology who would also carry the title of chief information officer. Um, I think everyone knows Hector. I don't know if everyone knows that Hector has essentially spent his career with Wayne County and he has been in technology for over 20 years. He started actually as a contractor. Uh, so he was hired by an outside vendor, but he was assigned to Wayne County. So it, he too has, he started entry level, but Hector has also ascended to various management roles and most recently has served as our director of, uh, of infrastructure, where he is, uh, you know, over our, our hardware. 
um, and systems. Hector is extremely knowledgeable, a very skilled technician, but also has really strong, strong leadership skills. And I think what speaks volumes about Hector, his team supports him and recommends him. When um, I announced to the team that we'd be recommending Hector, well, when we first announced that we'd had ex Hector to step in with short notice as the interim, everyone was excited and they expressed that. When we then announced, others even started reaching out saying, well, we hope he's going to get the position permanently. <laughs> and so what I told everyone is that actually I wanted Hector to evaluate us in the role as much as we may have been evaluating him and to see if this was something that he really wanted to do now. And after serving the role, I would tell you in a very short time, he came back and said, yes, Janelle, I'm interested. Uh -huh. And I would tell you that Hector um, immediately has done an assessment of the department. He's also identified the recommendations. He's participated in strategic planning for the department. So we are just very fortunate to have his historical knowledge and his expertise to serve in this role and his obvious interest. So it is with great pleasure that I recommend Hector to serve as the permanent director of information technology and chief information officer. And I know Hector is on as well, that um, I don't know if you wanna hear that, if he just wants to speak to why is he interested in serving in this role? Yes, definitely. Thank you, Janelle. I think we're all, um, well, I know I'm personally very excited to hear of right. this uh, recommendation and also really excited to hear that the team was excited um, for that recommendation as well. So that, you know, that says a lot. Um, yes. Hector, do you want to just, I know everyone here knows you, but um, do you want to just say a few words? Sure. Yes. Yes. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. And thank you, Janelle. Um, I just want to say I've been with the county for nearly 20 years. Um, I've gained the knowledge and experience, and I feel confident and well prepared to lead a department. Um, I look forward to facing new challenges and assisting departments and elected offices while moving the county forward. Okay, great. And um, I just have one question for you. You have been um, acting director since the director position was vacant. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so you've kind of been in this role for uh, how, and when was that, um, when did that happen? June, uh, June timeframe. Okay. Yes, that was like oh. mid-June. Okay, and um, I've got one question for Janelle. Um, has the, the um, oh gosh, the deputy director position, has that been posted um, publicly yet? It has not because I know under the, the Hector's predecessor, they had determined that they weren't going to fill the deputy director. So we're allowing Hector to make that decision as to as he's looking at his structure uh, okay. there to see if he feels that he needs to fill that position. Right. Okay. All right. Um, commissioners, uh, are there any questions for Hector or Janelle? Okay. I don't see any hands. Um, speak up if you need any. Great. Does anyone want to make a motion? I move approval. Okay. Any support? Support. And we go. Okay, it's been moved and supported. Um, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Knezik? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Chair Dobb? Yes. Motion passes. Um, thank you very much. And um, Hector, if you could make it to full board, we'd love to have you there. Thank you Absolutely. for being here today. Thank you all. Right, thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> all right, Madam Clerk, next item. Item five, requesting commission approval of amendment one to a professional <laughs> services contract with two one-year options to renew with Presidio Network Solutions Group. Okay, any questions on this item? This is for the um, Duo mobile um, application to keep our online stuff secure. Do you have a motion? <clears throat> I'll move approval of this item, Madam Chair. Anyone like to support? Support. It has been moved by Commissioner Colleen, supported by Commissioner Basham. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Knezik? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Chair Dobb? Yes. Motion passes. 
<clears throat> Excuse me, next item. <laughs> item six, requesting commission approval of retroactive amendment four to a one year sole source professional services agreement with Ivanti Inc. Okay, um, can someone just tell us why this is retroactive, please? Hi, uh, this is Tori Woods from the Department of Information Technology, um, the contract manager, I can speak on that. Um, specifically, the Avanti contract is um, retroactive due to changes internally at, with the vendor um, and their delay and their application for the FEP certification, FEP being the Fair Employment Practices. Um, and they were unwilling to pay the fee that would expedite that. So with um, the FEP compliance being mandated by the Wayne County Charter, I was unable to submit this for approval until I had the uh, certificate in hand. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Colleen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in looking at the uh, analysis from staff, uh, there's a section entitled Retroactivity Services Performed Without Payment. Uh, and I just want some clarification on a few of the points that were made in that section. Uh, the first thing that's pointed out is that uh, when the commission approval is required, any person who authorizes premature performance and or payment could be disciplined. Since this is retroactive uh, and it's extending the contract for three years proposed, uh, has there been any work done after the original expiration of the contract uh, until today when the, when the uh, three, three year extension has been requested? Um, yes, Commissioner Colleen uh, gets the, the services were provided under this contract. Um, however, no payments were issued. Okay. All right. Uh, because both things are asked for, I guess I would ask commission counsel if, and, and you know, like I say, this has come up before, uh, commission counsel, uh, if they were still working under this contract, but we're not receiving, uh, any payment until we approve this today, uh, does that qualify under premature performance, the uh, language in the uh, procurement ordinance? Through the chair to this um, honorable body, yes, commissioner, it does. So this contract would violate section 120-50 of the procurement ordinance because the vendor provided services and the county accepted services without a valid contract. Um, so, for example, if this body were to reject this contract, then you would have an issue with the vendor who's performed services, but who hasn't been paid. Um, so, yes, it is a violation of the ordinance. Is there a remedy for that, uh, counsel? I'm not sure what you mean, a remedy. I mean, obviously, departments should process contracts in a timely manner to avoid right. um this type of situation of having a vendor perform or have the vendor stop services until such time as the contract is approved. Um, are, does the ordinance um, talk about potential personal liability and things of that nature um, based on an assessment by Corporation Council? It does, but if I, if, and Joe may be able to help me here, I don't think Corporation Council has done any such assessment in quite some time. Through the chair, yeah. This is uh, Joe Sleeves. Like I, I have not seen any assessments done in probably two or three years at least. Yeah, like I say, thanks, thanks, Mr. Sleeves. Like, yeah, the, uh, like I say, this has come up before. If we're going to have it in the ordinance, then we have to act as the ordinance says, including the report. Uh, if there, for some reason, this language in the ordinance uh, about uh, work going on after the expiration of the contract, even though there hasn't been payment, uh, if that's problematic, maybe we need to look at the language in the ordinance because this does keep coming up. And 
I don't like voting on a contract where I'm being told, yeah, they're in violation of the ordinance. Um, and we're just going to kind of ignore that, approve this. They'll get paid for work that they've already done, uh, even after the expiration of the first contract. So it seems to me that we either have to change the ordinance or we have to enforce the current ordinance. Um, I, I can't in good conscience turn this contract down today and, and go back to square one. But also part of my conscience is I can't, I can't vote for a contract that's in violation of our procurement ordinance. Um, and I know I see somebody else with a hand up. I have one other question, Madam Chair. And under that section, again, it says, lastly, a resolution has been proposed that recognizes this contract is in violation. Uh, is that the section right below it that says reason for retroactivity? Uh, that the contract due to the vendor's delay and providing the supporting documentation. Is that the, uh, uh, is that the resolution that's proposed that recognizes this contract's in violation of the ordinance? That's the explanation from uh, administration? Yes. Uh, and the only thing I'll raise on that is uh, that does speak to retroactivity. However, what it does not speak to is work being performed after the contract had expired, the date of the contract had expired. Um, you know, it says a resolution is proposed that recognizes this contract is in violation. That is not what the reason was that was sent over the reason was hey this is why it's um uh this is why it's retroactive it doesn't address the question of uh why was work being done when there was no uh authorized contract in place so again this tells me we have some uh i don't know what you would call it with this section of the ordinance uh where we have the ordinance and we keep walking right through it um, and uh, in the crush of day-to-day -day business. Uh, so I, I, I see that somebody from uh, the administration would like to discuss this, but this is, um, you know, uh, you either follow the rules or you don't. And uh, we do have murky situations like this. So I'm, I'm interested in administration's response to my uh, questions here. Thank you, Commissioner Queen. And before um, we go to Aaron Wagner, um, I do want to agree with you that the, these sorts of situations really put us in a difficult spot because of, you know, all you that you just said, if we if we don't approve this contract, then um, we're in violation. We do approve the contract. We're in violation. So um, we really need to look at a way to yeah. stop this from happening. So, um, Aaron, the, the expression, ahead. Madam Chair, the expression yeah. is damned if you do, damned if you don't. <laughs> Aaron? Uh, through the chair, um, you know, as, as part of our... Uh, your uh, name and um, oh, new title. Sorry. I, I apologize. Yeah, uh, Aaron Wagner, uh, Deputy Chief Financial Officer of Wayne County. Uh, th through the chair, um, you know, as part of our TCM training, um, you know, on the retroactive contracts, we we can work with uh, work with commission staff uh, to come up with a policy that um, does follow to the letter of the law, um, the the ordinance in when submitting retroactive contracts. We'll make sure that part of the package, uh, you know, would meet the requirements of the opinion from corporation council and some other things um, and put that in as part of our training materials uh, moving forward. Uh, Madam Chair, if I may. Yes. Uh, again, Mr. Wagner, this gets a little murky. Uh, do you have lights and bells and whistles and smoke bombs going off? When you get to an end of the contract, you're intending to, as you do here, submit a extension for three years, but not all of that has gone through. 
don't you know right away when you get to the end of a contract and work is still being performed, even though there's no uh, extension or whatever for the contract? Don't you know that? So through the chair, there are uh, reports uh, through the system that can be obtained. Um, there are alerts that can be set in the system um, that that would notify the contract managers that that these uh, uh, that these contracts are expiring. Um, you know, procurement staff uh, puts together a package annually to the departments that kind of forecasts out for the next three to five years what's right what's in the system. And, and so, um, you know, we try our best efforts to ensure that there are not retroactive contracts. Um, yeah, well, I know you're doing that. And yeah. since you do know, uh, like you were, you, you knew when this contract was up, you knew that you needed to keep work and you knew that you were having, uh, some issues, uh, getting it to the commission on time for whatever reason. And I don't know what the solution is here. I think other than dialogue, that uh, if the commission can be notified, hey, this contract is expired. We're working on a, uh, you know, we're working on a resolution to get to you. But for whatever reason, uh, it is held up because uh, I'm looking for no surprises. We, I think we're always going to have some murky areas like this. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think to have communication with uh, commission staff and commission council that, hey, for this contract, <clears throat> there's going to be a couple of months where we need to keep them working until we can get this to the commission, uh, just so that there's a dialogue here. Uh, because what was sent over from administration on this did not, it addressed the fact this is going to be late and retroactive uh, and why that is, but it didn't discuss the violation of the ordinance which is, yeah, we still have them working uh, as a result. So, you know, I, I don't have a solution at my fingertips here by any means, but uh, I can see where some, you know, no surprise communication uh, can take place between administrative and, and commission staff that says, yep, we, we, we've got an issue with this one and that we find out about it uh, earlier rather than later. And I'll leave it go at that for now, Madam Chair. I know some other people have some response for that. I think um, Janelle, did you want to go first? Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, Janelle Allen, Chief Operating Officer with the County Executive's Office. And I just, I want to state on the record, and, and I know you have heard me before that the administration abhors retroactive contracts, just like the commission. And as Commissioner Colleen has said that it is just, how do you continue to provide or have some provide services without authorization? This is one of the highest priorities that Hector has inherited because I'm sure you know on your agenda, there are other retroactive contracts coming out of this department. Uh, this is one of the areas that I have Hector really dive deep into initially to figure out why is this department in this predicament? And uh, one thing that we have learned that came to our attention is that dealing with these, um, do we say national vendors, that they have been extremely difficult with which to work. Now, again, I don't want to use that as an excuse, but more, more of an explanation. And our staff just has not learned how to work through them and how to escalate items up to the director level and even to the executive's office when we're dealing with these national vendors, if not international vendors. And so what they do is they'll try, sometimes these contracts I've under, I understand have been held up simply because the, con the vendor did not have a current um, FEP, Fair Employment uh, app Certificate. And they just refuse, they don't respond. And because the service is critical, the, the, the contract staff just continue processing, processing. So we have made it clear that they have to escalate and we even have to start considering, do we need to start having different partners and different vendors if they are not gonna work with us and be willing to comply with the county requirements? But I did wanna state stress that we absolutely do recognize that this is just unreasonable. And this is one of the highest priorities coming in as Hector is coming in to make sure that they do not have retroactive contracts. Again, there are others on your agenda 
that I think are even more egregious than this. I think too, because of the nature of the criticality of the services is when our the contract staff will think that there's no way we can just stop them, not recognize there might be other options. So I do again want to state that on the record that we recognize this is just deplorable and highest priority for this to, to cease. Um, Commissioner Colleen, uh, absolutely, I've raised with the team as well, as you say, communication. That we see that we're in trouble, that we start communicating immediately with commission to let them know where we are, let them know what the plan is so that these are not just surprises coming on the agenda. Again, the number one goal is that you don't, we don't have these on the agenda, but as we're working through these and cleaning them up, uh, to have better communication with commission about where these these are, what the solutions are. Thank you, Janelle. Um, Hector, you're up next. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to uh, reiterate what uh, Janelle mentioned that we are refocusing our, refocusing our efforts on contracts. Um, yeah, I, I'm in the same boat. Retro contracts. Um, those are like to. Um, have those as being in the past, and we are putting mechanisms in place, so we're aware of when contracts are coming um, up for renewal, and 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 uh, um, there'll be alerts, and a lot of people in the contracts and our business services area will will be aware of those uh, deadline dates. Okay, thank you, um, Victoria. Can you see yes. any and title for the record? Yes. Victoria Ennis Edwards, Director of Wayne County Human Relations Business Inclusion Division. I just wanted to support and reiterate exactly what Janelle was saying with some of these large national vendors. Um, one of the trainings that I participate in with Erin is we continue to do workshops and training with the contract managers. One of the things that I ask them to do is we want to start at 120, 90, and then 60 days before a contract is to expire, as well as when the FEP is supposed to expire. So they will start going back to a lot of the nationals. This is a great example of it. End up chasing people down to get the new information. They do a lot of moving around or passing the buck. And then some of them, quite frankly, um, feel like they don't have to complete the forms. So it can take us two to three months, not literally chasing people down to try to get the information. Again, a, not an excuse, just some understanding. So sometimes we start, we try always to start so far ahead, but chasing people down. So the reality of what Janelle said of the possibility of saying, okay, well, while you provide these services, we might have to look for another option. So understand that is something that we constantly fight with vendors. Um, once they get the contract, some of them feel they get a little uh, comfortable. So there is a huge amount of time of chasing them down to get the correct paperwork. Um, and it ends up literally being a tag team between the department, such as DOIT's department, and then my team literally constant. I mean, we're stalking people sometimes, teasingly, we're calling them so much. But just to understand, too, that that is a real issue as we work with these vendors and try to figure out another solution. It's not a flip, oops, we just didn't do it. It is a lot, a lot of times we are truly chasing people down to get the right information. Thank you. I have a question. Um, so I understand you're doing a lot of work to get information from vendors. Is it, do you feel it's worthwhile um, to do that? And I know sometimes the vendors, um, you know, there might only be one, one choice or there's not a whole lot of options in certain fields. Um, but do we ever say, you know, you're not getting us the information, we're gonna go with our next option and, and drop that vendor um, because they're not providing us with the information. Um, don't wanna speak out of turn. So I'm gonna tag team it and pass it to Aaron. I know that is something we do pre so for example, if a bid is awarded and we're still chasing you for information and you didn't get it, they will absolutely go to the next person. And I know that's something that they're looking to do even more of, even when you have the contract. Yeah. Unfortunately, sometimes we get folks where it is so specialized that that might be the only one and mm -hmm. that's where it can get cumbersome. So Aaron, yeah. if you have any more, I don't wanna speak on his behalf, but I know that's what I have seen thus far. Um, and I agree with you, we, we, Aaron and I are constantly putting our heads together, trying to figure out how to massage it and how we can change this and move this forward in another direction. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Colleen, did you want to ask something or do you want me to go to um, Commission Council next? Well, I, 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 I do have a comment. Uh, okay, Madam go ahead. Chair, on this, and then I do want to hear from Council after that. Uh, from where I sit in this job, and I understand everything that I'm, the different folks in administration are saying. From where I sit in my job, we have ordinances. We either enforce them, we ignore them, or we amend them. If there's something about national contractors that gives administration heartaches, uh, that maybe they operate a little bit differently, uh, I don't know if there's other language that we could come up with uh, for these national contractors, because I, I, I understand what administration is saying on this. What I can't do in my job is uh, ignore the... Um, ignore the ordinance we have. So if it needs some tweaking, if there are some ideas uh, for that, then I think we should do that uh, because this question comes up too often for us not to you know, come up with a way of, of rectifying this and frankly, saving a lot of time and whatever uh, staff time that gets put into these situations. So I'll leave that as a comment, but I'm I am curious as to what corporation or commission council has to say here. Thank, Thank you, you. Madam. Um, commission Council Felicia Johnson. Um, yes, through the chair, um, just a comment with regards to information. There's been some discussion about better communication and information flowing to the commission. Um, and what I'm what I would ask from the departments, not just from this department, but from all of the departments, because we do have this issue across the board. Um, some departments are better than others, but it's, it's a countywide sort of issue. Um, but if the cover letters, when the documents are submitted, if those transmittal letters can be a little more informative regarding, OK, this is why it's late. Um, the vendor is still performing services. This is how much is owed. Because a lot of times staff has to ask the questions. We have to review. We have to dig to figure it out and ask the questions. So it's not always clear what's happening. Um, in addition to that, um, and I know Janelle would probably agree with this, you know, the idea of just streamlining contracts, because sometimes um, we tend to have to send things back, whether it's because a form is missing or some error, which then tends to slow the contract down even further. Um, so there are probably several things that can be done to help speed up the process. Um, but with regards to information, it would be helpful if those transmittal letters were a little more informative um, with regards to the matter. So we'll be in, in a position to notify the chairperson of that committee or the commission chair as necessary, and we'll have the information up front. Thank you. And then one last comment, um, Sue Hamoud. Yes, good afternoon, um, Sue Hamoud, Deputy Corp Corporation Counsel. Um, Commissioner Colleen and commissioners, I just wanted to let you all know that the ordinance does allow for the county to sue the vendors if there were any damages that were caused during the time that they performed any work without, without a contract. Um, historically, I believe there was a time where Commission Council was providing us with a list of the retroactive contracts, and then we were providing letters indicating um, that we looked into it and that there were no damages, therefore a civil lawsuit is not necessary. Um, I, I can't speak to when that stopped or why that stopped, but perhaps that is something that we can look into uh, reinstituting in the near future. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, do we have any further discussion on this item before we move on? Okay, hearing. Felicia, you, you still have your hand up. I'm assuming that's just I'm from sorry. before. I'll, I will put it down. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, okay, do we, um, does anyone want to make a motion on this item? I think we're, we're still on item number six. I'll move it. And uh, I'll support it, clean. It's been moved and supported. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Knizek? 
Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? No. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Chair Dobb? Yes. Motion passes. Next item, please. Item seven, requesting commission approval of a three-year comparable source contract with Oracle America. Um, do you have any questions on this item? Would anyone like to make a motion? Move approval, Colleen. It's been moved. Any support? I'll do a re reluctant support, Madam Chair. Thank you. It's been moved by Commissioner Colleen, supported by Commissioner Basham. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Knezik? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Reluctant, yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Chair Dobb? Yes. Motion passes. Next item. Item eight. Requesting commission approval of retroactive modification five to a three-year contract with a two-year option to renew with AT&T Corporation. Okay, Commissioner Colleen, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, same issue that we just discussed. Uh, I'm not going to recapitulate all of that, but only to underscore how often this comes up and that we need as the commission and as administration, uh, a better way of communicating uh, or whatever uh, that needs to be done on these things. Because uh, I don't, I've, I've got, apparently I've got an ordinance that's kind of unenforceable in a lot of cases. It's enforceable in some and not in others. So again, I'll just say we have to do something with that ordinance. I, I don't think we can leave it the way it is. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Yes, and I we just had a pretty robust discussion on retroactivity. Um, so I'm not gonna go into all of that again, but um, here we are. So any other commissioners I have question, discussion? I'm going to move its approval, Madam Chair, Colleen. All right, it's been moved. Anyone want to support? Support. Okay, it's been moved and supported. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Knezik? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Chair Dobb? Yes. <coughs> Motion passes. Thank you. Next item. Item nine, requesting commission approval of a five-year comparable source contract with CBTS Technology Solutions. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask about the, the audit clause on this. Um, the, this agreement does not include an audit clause authorizing the Wayne County Office of Legislative Auditor General to examine and audit records. Can someone speak to that? Um, Commissioner, Commissioner Dobb, this is Dwayne Seals. This is uh, looking at number number nine as far as the, um, the, CBT, the CBTS contract? Yes. Okay, yes. And what was your, your question was what, oh, sorry, this is Dwayne Seals, uh, Deputy Wayne County Clerk, Chief Financial Officer. Yeah. Was uh, your... uh, so my notes um, say that this agreement does not include an audit clause of authorizing our um, Auditor General to examine and audit records. So why, why was that not included? I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm, is that something I've never, I'm not aware of them actually being able to audit uh, This is an outside firm. They want to go out and audit their records, the Auditor General? 
I, I guess I, I, I'm not for sure. This is a um, something that's been has been asked before, though. I did. Um, you know, this is something that we said no to. No, that it was ever presented. Yeah, I don't know if that was ever presented to us, though. Okay. But but is that a normal process? I guess I'm asking that that audit uh, outside vendors' uh, records. There is, is that it. I believe so. Um, through, through the so, chair, this is uh, Joel Slezak, um, the, the policy analyst on this. Um, in many agreements, in the majority of the agreements we have, that clause is in there, allowing the auditor. But even if the clause is not there, per the charter, the, um, the auditor general may still audit. Okay, so Joe, we don't need to have the audit clause in because no. of our... Um, I probably should defer to Felicia on, you know, you. at this point. So, <laughs> thank you. My apologies. Okay, so through the chair, I'm not sure if I recall this issue coming up, but to answer the question, yes, we generally have an audit clause. Um, the the procurement ordinance requires um, the contracts to allow the auditor general the ability to audit contracts. In this instance, um, if I'm not mistaken, these are contracts that are not the county standard form. These were contracts that were the vendor standard form. So what tends to happen is when you have technology type contracts, we tend to, the county tends to use the vendor's form um, of contract versus the county standard form um, of contract. Sometimes the county does an addendum to add terms. I don't recall if this particular contract had that addition of the terms, but the reason that the audit clause specifically isn't in there could be the fact that this was the vendor standard form of contract. Yes, mm -hmm. yes it is. I'm sorry. But I'm, I'm trying to pull it up now because I, I don't recall if there was a, a county addendum um, added to this, but we could definitely look at this before full board. I don't think that it was problematic in this instance, but I will confirm that review and confirm um, prior to full board. Okay, thank you. Um, Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner Basham. Yeah, uh, going out and auditing uh, outside vendors' contracts, uh, as relates to the county, that portion of it, yes, we, we've always been able to audit contracts with the county, but to go out to an outside contractor that uh, looking into their books that has nothing to do with the county, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about with a contract that has to do with the county. So yes, we're able to do it with or without a form, as I understand it. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Klein. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this this contract, well, I, I would like at the end of this, our Auditor General to tell us where she is at with this. But uh, this contract is for software, the technology to set up a call center. Uh, what about the hiring of people do we have people ready to go uh, to fill these slots? Or how is the hiring going to happen? Uh, uh, Commissioner Clean, through the, through the chair, yes, in fact, this honorable body has actually approved the hiring of uh, six call center employees, which we've already hired them, and they are working as we speak. However, they do not have the software or the technology to actually be fully functional. So they were hired when this body approved them, approved them to be hired. So we've hired those employees and they have been taking calls at this time. We have just been in the process of getting the contract where we can get the proper equipment so it can be fully functional. So you're not gonna, okay, you, you don't need to hire any additional people here. No, those, no, those individuals are up and working as we speak. And as you know, Mr. Seals, uh, and, and I've been guilty of this too, um, giving you a call when people are having difficulty with marriage licenses or um, so with this new technology in place, uh, do we have some sort of an idea on how that's going to affect the, the waiting line as it were for dealing with marriage licenses, CCWs, et cetera? Exactly. I can speak on it br uh, briefly. We do have the manager, uh, Robert Tompkins, here as well. But what happens is this, this call center now, when, a, when an individual calls in, we don't have a queue system. So they call and that line is busy. So if six people are on the phone, what happens, they get, a, they get a busy signal. And then they hang up and they call back and they call back and they get another busy signal because there's six people on the line. So what happens is that eventually they call you or call another commissioner and says, I can't get through. 
This new process with the software is gonna allow us when individuals call, they'll be put into a queue so they can sit, so they can wait. So eventually we will be able to answer calls and we'll be able to take those calls. So they won't be calling um, yourself and well as other, other commissioners. Well, and of course also, Mr. Seals, uh, it's just not that uh, where they can't get through. So they call us. It's like I got through and, you know, the first, um, and, and you get this too, right? I can get in for my CCW in two weeks in Macomb County and I got to wait a year and a half in Wayne County, right? Um, and so are, are those timelines going to be shortened? And the other thing I would suggest here, Mr. Seals, is keep the commission apprised of like how long the waits are. Um, because if we don't know that, then we might be, when we talk to people, we might be spreading some misinformation too. So if I know that the time, the waiting time to get a CCW is down to two months, that, that's a different story than it's 12 months, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think keeping the commission apprised of how long it's actually taking uh, to deliver this service from the time we are contacted by citizens uh, will also help us and help us in our dialogue with the citizens out there because yes indeed we get the phone calls i understand all right thank you thank you madam chair thank you <clears throat> um do we have any further discussion on this item Hearing none, would anyone like to make a motion? Queen moves approval. Support. And moved and supported. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Knezik? Yes. Commissioner Claude Coleman? Commissioner Clark Coleman? You're on mute, Irma. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Chair Dobb? Yes. Uh, motion passes. Um, can we move to item number 11 and then come back to 10 since 10 will be in closed session? Can you all see the agenda on the screen? No. No. My connection is a little unstable. One second, let me pull it back up. What about now? It's um, starting. Yes. It's not here yet. It's starting. Oh, I can see it. Can you see it, Commissioner Colleen? Well, that now it popped up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, Madam Clark. Um, next thing, please. Item 11, requesting commission approval of a comparable source contract with a one-year option to renew with Mario Morrow and Associates. All right, um, is there someone from the administration to just give us a brief summary on this item and also address um, why this is a comparable source item, comparable source contract? Yes, uh, Commission Chair Dobb. This is Tiffany Jackson, spokesperson and director of media relations for the county executive. Um, this is to serve as an executive coach for the communications staff and the communications uh, acting director, which currently is myself. Um, it is a comparable source contract because Mr. Morrow is coming to us with over 30 years of experience. And just like every other department and division throughout the county, it's communications desire to uh, focus on building our staff through growth and development, as well as retention and training. And Mr. Morrow has a very proven and solid track record in this area. Um, he's extremely familiar with the county executive's vision. He's um, very familiar with the mission of the department. He's no stranger to Wayne County government. He has a wealth of institutional knowledge from his previous work in Wayne County. He's very familiar with uh, Wayne County as a community because he's done work with local governments as well, as well as educational institutions. Um, 
He has a lot of media contacts that will prove to be invaluable to the administration and his expertise just all around in the field of communications and public relations um, is something that will truly help to restructure and um, to reboot our communications department because right now we're very limited in staff in our department and we truly need um, uh, the benefit of his expertise and his knowledge. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, one thing I just wanted to point out was, um, I think there needs to be a correction on this item because the amount should be 175,500. Um, commission staff, can you correct me if I'm wrong on that? So when we um, move this item, we'll have to approve contingent upon um, correcting that budgeted amount. Did I get that right, Commission staff? Uh, yes, Commissioner Dobb, Chris Albrecht, uh, Commission staff, policy analysts. Uh, if our fiscal analyst, Mary Carr, wanted to chime in, I would allow them to, but essentially I think you have it right that uh, we had learned uh, from the uh, communications unit in the county executive's office that the budgeted amount is actually, I want to say, $13,500 less. And so uh, therefore, perhaps the amount should be corrected to reflect that. Madam yep. Chair? Yes. Okay, we talked in the past about these remittals. Sorry, who, who is speaking? Can you, oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Commissioner Kenlock, I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yes, um, we've talked yeah, We've talked in the past about um, when these remittals are coming to us, um, that they, uh, you know, reflect um, accurate information. And so I just want to make note of that and just ask, you know, um, how did it actually get here um, without actually having the correct dollar amount listed on the agenda? So is it just the agenda where it was um, mis where it was uh, print wrong or is it in the actual rem remittal? The contract document. Okay. So in the actual contract document, it was wrong as well. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner Knizek. Thanks, Madam Chair, can you hear me? Yes. Just two quick things. You know, Tiffany had mentioned something that really resonated with me. You know, she is an accomplished communications professional and is excited about the opportunity to grow and develop as a professional. Uh, furthermore, I, I just did a media training last week, been doing it for 10 years, did one last week, always picking up new skills. So kudos to our staff uh, here at the county for always trying to go above and beyond and better themselves and do better for each and every one of us and the people that we serve. So again, kudos to Tiffany and, and the other folks here at the county. And then also, I just really can't say enough good things about Mario Moro and his team. Uh, have a chance to work with him in a number of different capacities have full faith and confidence in his abilities and his leadership. Uh, and so I would like to move the adoption of item number 11 as amended to accurately reflect the dollar value associated with this contract, please. Okay. I'll support it. All right, we have a uh, motion and support. Um, I see Mary Carr, you've got your hand up. Did you just wanna comment on the amount? Yes, Madam Chair, um, through the chair. So this originally came to us as a 14 month contract for the $189,000. Um, after, after I submitted questions and got responses back, being that it wasn't gonna start November 1st like they originally had thought, and it's starting upon commission approval in December, um, after full board, it was going to a 13 month contract, which is why the amount is being changed to $175,500 versus the $189,000. Um, so I believe after speaking with Felicia and Chris this week, and this being contingent upon, that I think this contract will be adjusted before full board. Felicia, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But I just want to make that clear so that the commissioners would understand. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate You're welcome. that. Thank you. You're okay. welcome. So um, we do have a motion and support. Um, Commissioners, any further discussion? Okay, Madam Clerk, please um, call the roll. Commissioner Knizek? Yes. 
Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Chair Dobb? Yes. Motion passes. Next item. Item 12, requesting commission approval of Amendment 3 to a cooperative volume licensing contract with Dell Marketing. Okay, any questions on this item? Move okay. approval, Madam Chair. Okay, any support? Support. It's been moved and supported. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Knizek? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Chair Dobb? Yes. Motion passes. Um, next item. Item 13, requesting commission approval of retroactive amendment one to a two-year legal services agreement with Perkins Law Group. Okay. Um, do you have any questions or discussion on this item? And would anyone like to make a motion? Yeah, I'll I'll move. Move. I, su I support Commissioner Clark Coleman. Commissioner Clark motion. Coleman with the motion and Commissioner Colleen with the support. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Knezik? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Chair Dobb? Yes. Motion passes. Next item, we'll move back to 10. Is the agenda back on the screen? Yes. Item 10, requesting commission approval of a settlement in the matter of Mendelssohn Orthopedics versus County of Wayne. Corporation Council has reviewed the litigation and is of the opinion that a discussion of trial or settlement strategy in connection with specific pending litigation in an open meeting will have a detrimental financial effect on the county's litigation or settlement position. Therefore, a closed client council session is requested. All right. Can I get a motion to move to closed session, please? So move. Support. Just removed and supported. Um, Madam Chair, please call the roll. Commissioner Knizek? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Uh -huh. Chair Dobb? Yes. All right, Madam Clerk, please move us into closed session. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, we're back on item number 10. Do we have a motion for item number 10? Uh, Madam Chair, I'll uh, move to approve this settlement. Support. Been moved and supported. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Knizek? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman. Commissioner Clark Coleman. Okay, yes. Commissioner Basham. Yes. Commissioner Colleen. Aye. Chair Dobb. Yes, motion passes. <clears throat> Next item. If such other matters as may be properly submitted before the committee. I yeah, have none. Next item. The comments. Did we receive any emails? No emails. Okay. Could you unmute all the lines? The lines have been unmuted. Great. Is there anyone here who wishes to make a public comment to the Committee on Government Operations? Anyone wishing to make a public comment today, just go ahead. And last call for public comments. All right, hearing none, next item. Adjournment. So moved. 
removed and deported. Deported. 